All right, so if you've been watching Walker Independence, every now and then you might feel like it's Callian's world and we're just living in it. First of all, the man is all kinds of heroic, looks great riding a horse, and might even have the attention of a certain young lady. Take a look. Callian! Senor Reyes, I'm sorry it's late to meet you and the elders. It won't happen again. You could repay me by taking Lucia home. I have to stay in town for a council meeting today. It would be my pleasure. Okay, look how his voice changed. And it's our pleasure to have this next guest join our CW family. He's bringing a necessary voice to showbiz. Please welcome actor Justin Johnson Cortez. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a family affair. It's a family reunion because we just saw it up front. That's right. That's right. It's good to be back. I good know. to be talking to you again. Listen, and then then we were still talking about the show premiering. Now we have the show. And, and from the start of the series, everyone can see that your character is like in the heroic mode because he rescues Abby in the pilot episode. So talk to us more about Callie for those who haven't met him or who don't know what to expect. Is it going to be all hero or is it going to, you know? You know, Callie, if you haven't seen the show yet, Callie is kind of torn between uh, his world with the tribe and the changing landscape of the West and his relationship with town. And, um, you know, coming in, I was really excited because I was excited to play a character, a native character that was going to be more on that hero side that we didn't really get to see a lot in, a, you know, Westerns, traditional Westerns that we've had in the past. And, um, you know, he, the thing I say about Callie is I, I love that he's noble. I love he's great, but I still want him to be human. And, and as humans, we make mistakes, right? So um, I, I'm excited for people to see kind of uh, just the whole complexity of Cali and, and where he comes from and why he is the way he is. And we'll probably be getting that here pretty soon if you guys tune in. So. Okay, what do you mean if they tune in? They will tune in. They'll be <laughs> tuning in. And by, so now that I've gotten the, the, the serious question, I have to ask that question to pretend like I'm a real, like, you know, serious reporter person. But seriously, <laughs> how, like, what is up? With, let me talk about your hair because I was like, does he have a fan? that goes do you have a beyonce fan that follows you around because i'm That's, sorry like in every scene everyone's hair is still but yours is like Ooh. i'm like what is that <laughs> what, what is it's that a, it's an ongoing joke it's an ongoing joke um honestly it we shoot in santa fe and uh, on the pilot it was extremely windy and i was worried about it because I, I have so much hair and um we would laugh because for some reason it would just always blow in the perfect <laughs> perfect way um there's there's this native TikTok person who made a joke about it. It's like, you know, how native are you? It's like my hair blows even when it's not windy out. Thank you. So I, I thought that was great. So <laughs> it's not just me because every single time I'm like, okay, am I looking at the cast? Other cast, but they're standing there, their hair is like, I was like, is the wind just blowing at this dude? Is there a fan? But all right. <laughs> You, you go, Beyonce fan. You go. And another I'll impressive thing yeah. beyond the hair is that you had to learn to speak another language to portray Callian. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I had to learn how to speak Apache, which is it's challenging. It, it was probably the most challenging part of playing this character, um, just because it's not a language I ever, ever spoke or even heard. And um, sometimes, you know, certain words don't fit right in your mouth. So you just really got to work on it. Um, but the translator, he's incredible. He, he also kind of helps us culturally with the Apache stuff in, in terms of our camp and, you know, what you might see in camp and, and, um, you know, what we wear and stuff like that. So it's been an incredible experience to be able to do that and just an honor to be able to speak this language. Well, well, your translator must be really proud because we can't even tell. I thought maybe when, when I saw that you had learned it, I was like, he learned, I thought maybe you always spoke it or something. But I was talking to oh, Lawrence. Before I tell you what Lawrence said to ask you, I have to bring up the fact that we discussed how this is the most diverse cast uh, any Western we've ever seen before, which is kudos to you guys for bringing the representation we keep asking for, making us see it and believe that it's possible. And also, especially since it's, it's um, Native American Heritage Month, too. Yeah, absolutely. No, it, it's been uh, really great to see these characters on screen when, uh, like I said, in Westerns before, we haven't seen as much of these characters or been able to really see their story or why they're there and what they feel, what they think, you know, that was, that was something that was really important to us coming in is that, um, we weren't just going to be there like on the sideline or, or supporting main characters, but you, you get to know how we feel about, you know, 
about being in this time and experiencing this this changing landscape. And we'll get to see that in Gift of Fear too, right? Yeah, so Gift of Fear um, is, a, is a film that I just shot a couple of months ago, right before we started shooting the, the series. And uh, it really highlights an issue that a lot of people don't really know about, but it's missing and murdered indigenous, indigenous women. And um, it's, it's a big problem around the world. Uh, Native women are like 10 times more, more likely than the rest of, rest of the ethnicities to have, uh, to go missing and to uh, have, uh, be treated violently. Mm. So it, it's really, um, it's a really powerful film. Uh, I, was, I was honored to be a part of it. And, and we're honored that you're using your voice to shed light on these issues that we would not have necessarily known about. And also, side note about Lawrence being here, I told you Lawrence said something about your, your character. What is it about the pants? He said to ask you about the pants. So I, I wear like traditional leggings, so, um, and then I have a breech cloth. And, and nobody realized that there's no like butt to the pants. There's no, it's like almost like you're wearing chaps in a way. And, uh, it took them weeks to figure it out, but then <laughs> suddenly they're like, wait, wait, you have no, your butt's hanging out of, of these things. And it, I don't know, it, it just became a really funny joke, and now it's, it's this thing on set. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, he doesn't have pants on. Uh, well, of course. But, That's what Lawrence will have me ask you. Tell Lawrence I said, because I'm going to come visit the set. He invited me, if the restraining order is yes, up. Yes, please do. I will, I will be there. Tell Matt I said hi, too, because I know Matt from our other CW family show that we had in the past. I said we, he did. So tell them I'm going to be I'm going to come visit. If the restraining please, order please is over, come. I will be there in a heartbeat. Everyone knows to check you out Thursday nights right here on Pix11. So it starts at 8, Walker begins at 8, followed by Walker Independence at 9, and this week is a mega 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 big episode for Justin. So tune in and show some support. Bye Justin, such a pleasure to see you again. Bye. Thanks see for you having soon. me. Great job and everything. Dan and Hazel. Thank you.